From anatomy to anesthesiology, from pathology to pharmacology, from microbiology to medicine, a one-man resource to the world of health sciences. Welcome to Dr. Paul's Medical Lectures. A practicing physician, Dr. Paul offers you essential insights on diseases afflicting millions of people around the world. For today's lecture, here is Dr. Paul. Good evening, folks. This is Dr. Paul. Thank you very much for tuning to our channel today. Today I want to talk a few minutes about uh, hypocalcemia. Hypocalcemia is basically low calcium level, but it is often mistaken as a neurological disease because some of these uh, clinical symptoms we see in hypocalcemia, they mimic neurological disease. And also, many times, if albumin level is low, it reflects in, on the level of calcium. So the most common cause of total uh, low serum calcium level is hypoalbuminemia. Whenever hypo albumin level falls like below 4 grams per liter, then serum calcium level is reduced by 1 milligrams per deciliter for every one gram per liter fall of albumin. That's why the corrected calcium is always is uh, calcium plus 0.8 multiplied by 4 minus albumin level. So that is the formula you need to use. But remember, don't go by the calcium level on the face value. Always calculate the ionized calcium level based on the albumin level. So Hypoalbuminemia influences the calcium level. That's a very, very important clinical point. Decreased intake of uh, calcium or small bowel disease, short bowel disease, vitamin D deficiency. All these problems cause uh, uh, calcium uh, low absorption. So when you think about the causes, think about uh, decreased absorption and increase or loss like uh, increased loss that happens in chronic kidney disease or when the patient is in diuretics. And the third cause is endocrine causes, like whenever there is hypoparathyroidism. You see, parathyroid hormone, PTH, it plays the essential role in the calcium uh, hemostasis. So whenever the parathyroid glands do not produce enough parathyroid hormone, we see hypocalcemia. There is another condition called pseudo-hypoparathyroidism. And uh, when sometimes the medullary cal calcinoma of the thyroid, which produces increased levels of calcitonin, you see calcitonin decreases the calcium level. So whenever there is a high level of uh, calcium, uh, calcitonin, the low calcium level falls. And uh, you, need, you should also remember pancreatitis. You remember Ramson's criteria. One of the criteria is low calcium level. So in pancreatitis, rhabdomyolysis, chronic kidney disease, the calcium level falls. And there is hyperphosphatemia. Whenever there is hyperphosphatemia and some drugs like uh, pleomycin and uh, loop diuretics, phoscarnate and aminoglycoside antibiotics, they all cause low calcium level. So remember those low absorption, increase or loss, endocrine causes, drugs, and the diseases. These are the five things you need to remember. And also, the think of in advanced uh, uh, chronic kidney disease, when the production of 125 dihydroxy D3 decreases, patients will have low vitamin D and uh, low calcium. That goes. That is the pathological mechanism. And also, primary hyperparathyroidism due to mutations, because. Uh, PTH plays an essential role in calcium hemostasis. Whenever its level is low, you will see low calcium level. So always uh, go in that order. And the other thing is magnesium. Whenever there is magnesium depletion, you will see a less response to PTH on the calcium receptors. What happens? So when the magnesium level falls down, so ultimately, PTH is not responding well. It's not working well. And ultimately, it falls the calcium level. So magnesium depletion causes 
hypocalcemia. So it's, you should always treat hypomagnesemia whenever you want to treat hypocalcemia. That's also another very, very important clinical uh, point. Now, uh, the symptoms, you see the neuromuscular junctions, cardiovascular system, skeletal muscle, they all develop on calcium. So due to low calcium, these people develop uh, uh, spasms, you see, they develop laryngospasm and convulsions and perivoral paresthesias, peripheral paresthesias, abdominal pain, because uh, these are spasms, you see. And uh, two things you need to remember, chest exercise, that is the contract, whenever you tap on the facial muscle, patients develop the contraction of uh, the facial muscles. The other thing is the tosia sign, whenever you use this uh, blood pressure cough and put the brachial pressure, uh, artery pressure, the patient develop a carpopedal spasm, that is the prosia sign. And the increased QT prolongation on EKG, these are the three important clinical signs in hypocalcemia. And hypocalcemia can cause deposition of calcium in basal ganglia, resulting in central nervous system problems. So always go for those, these spasms and muscular spasms and all those things. So those are the clinical symptoms and signs. So whenever calcium is low, phosphate goes up. So you might see hyperphosphatemia in many of these conditions, but that's not your rule. There are conditions which cause both hypophosphatemia and hypocalcemia whenever these uh, hormonal issues come. In respiratory alkalosis, we see total serum calcium is normal, but ionized calcium is low. So in EKG, you see a prolonged QT interval. Now, hypocalcemia, how do you treat it? The treatment is give calcium. Whenever you see uh, a symptomatic patient, like uh, the patient has tetany, spasms, seizures, and uh, uh, arrhythmias, give IV calcium gluconate because it has short duration. You need to give continuous calcium infusion in many times. When the patient doesn't have any symptoms, you give oral calcium like by mouth you give vitamin D and nowadays we are uh, encouraging vitamin D high levels like 1000 to 2000 to 3000 units in patients because especially in uh, uh, colder regions in North America because the vitamin D absorption is not good in so many of the people living here so those are the main points about uh, hypocalcemia and whenever you give calcium by mouth, always say urinary calcium excretion because that tells you how they are metabolizing it. And when there is a hypocalcemia due to hypoalbuminemia, that means there is enough calcium in the body. So you don't have to treat the patient. But when you do the corrected calcium level, and if it is still low, then you have to treat the patient. So those are the most important points about hypocalcemia. And uh, follow us at our website because we are posting a study plan. We are on a study plan right now to cover 700 most important topics for the examination. So uh, uh, join us on our website. Thanks for listening. For more medical videos, please visit us at www.drpaul.org and take time to browse through hundreds of health videos we regularly post on our site. If you are preparing for USMLE, PLAB, and other medical exams, make sure you visit our website to browse through our videos explaining the essential points you need to know before taking these examinations. For more information, visit us at www.drpaul.org. Thank you, and may God richly bless you. You. Are you preparing for USMLE? Please do not waste thousands of dollars on training courses. Get the books written by Dr. Paul with the student-to-student -student tips and memory aids. The success will be yours, and you will soon realize your dream of becoming a physician in the United States. If you are preparing for Step 2 Clinical Skills, study USMLE Smasher, a guide helping thousands of medical students to pass this examination. For more information, visit us at www.drpaul.org.